This morning, I'm talking about following God's plan for your life. Following God's plan for your life. Last week, we said by sharing about, we said by sharing about, um, we said by sharing about um, God's purpose for your life. And one of the things we said that was significant, amongst other significant things, is the fact that um, God has a purpose for your creation. Now, let me explain this to you this way. Now, this is an iPhone. Um, if I want to know the purpose of the iPhone, who do I ask? The iPhone or the creator? Because do you agree with me that before the iPhone was designed, that the creator had something in mind? Yes or no? Exactly. Because he had um, something in mind. He had an intent. He had a design in his mind before it was created. So I don't ask the iPhone, what is your purpose? I look for the creator and ask the creator, what is your purpose? How come when it comes to you, you ask yourself for your purpose, not your creator. The reason why people do not know their purpose is this. They, what they call it, they do not ask the right person. Some people even go to another person and say, what do you think is my purpose? It's like an iPhone going to a Samsung saying that, you know, what do you think is my purpose? Sam, you know, Samsung is going to tell them that stay in America. That's what it's going to say. So instead of asking, instead of asking yourself for your purpose, what you need to consult is your curator and ask your curator, hey, um, Lord Jesus, what is my purpose? And one of the things we defined yesterday is that some people, you know, so many people have come up with very, like, very nice definition of what purpose is and all of those kind of things. And all of those things are not necessarily purpose because your purpose is not your talent. Someone says, in fact, sometimes your talent, um, your talent um, tells you your purpose. Listen to me. Your talent does not tell you your purpose. Your purpose reveals what you are gifted with. How do I know that? If talent reveals purpose, then Jeremiah should never be a prophet because when God called him, he said, I can talk. Glory to God. So with the thing about purpose, our purpose is in Christ. And in a simple way, what's our purpose in Christ? Just one simple thing. The reason why, so your purpose is why God made you. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. I don't know if you can come on the screen. You know, we have some challenge with the, we're trying to do some like, rework our screen for, for the wine press. So, you know, I guess maybe some of, the, some of them, yeah. So this is what the Bible says. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For thou art created all things, and what? For thy what? He said, for thy pleasure, they are all created. Meaning this, that I was not created for myself. I was created for him. Man's purpose, man was made to know God and to make God known. God made you in such a way that he will be the center of your life. That's why God made you. Because sometimes we, we live in a selfish generation. You know a selfish generation? A selfish generation is really about me. Like, it's, it's about me. Like, you know, we don't want, it's about me. So, if I like it, I do it. If I, everything's about me, what do you do? I do what I like. You know, you have self-made women, self-made men, self-made people. It's about, it's a selfish, it's about me. And God says, that's not the purpose I made you. I didn't make you for yourself. He said, I designed you for me. That's huge. God designed you for himself. That is like super huge. So the reason I'm saying that to you is this. This is the reason I'm saying that to you. If God designed him, so this is what I, this is what I said in the earlier service. So God designed you to know him. So every man that you know has a God-sized hole in him that only God can fill. Did you get that? Every man has a God-sized hole in him, only God and feel. And I'm saying so because when you have this God-sized hole in you, that hunger, that appetite is there. And if you're not careful, you're going to use other things to try to feel it, but only God can really feel it. So the, in Africa, people worship trees, who worship water, who worship shrines. They will say something is called Amadera, there's something is called Shongo. And, and the reason they were inventing God, hoping that those gods will feel something, it was because they desperately needed they had to worship something. In fact, not just the Africans alone, even the Greeks. The Greeks did so bad that one time Paul went to a city, there was a signboard to the God they had, so many gods they had worshipped. 
But they knew that there was a God they were missing. He said, to the God that we do not know, but we still worship you. And Paul said, let me start from that. Everybody has a God side home. And I'm saying, I'm saying to you because this hole that you have inside you, nothing can fill it but God. Nothing. That's why, have you seen people that give all themselves to their career? When you give all of yourself to your career, you still feel empty at the end of the day. There are people like that. Because they're hoping that if I can become this person in my career, I'll be successful. But with all the money, they're still empty. Have you not seen women that think that if I can marry this person of my dreams, I'll become somebody. And they are married today and they're really disappointed because they, are used to, they hope that the love for man will fill the whole of God. And that's why you hear some marital complaints. It's sometimes a partner in marriage, what they want from their partner, only God can do it for them. Because people have holes in them. Have you not seen rich people that have so much money that they and their children and grandchildren cannot spend it and yet they're stealing some more? The reason why they're saying some more is this. They are empty. So they hope that the more money I get, money will bring some satisfaction, some fulfillment, some peace. But the more they have, the emptier they become. Have you not seen of some ladies at work, even some men at work, they will bury themselves into all the work, hoping that the work would distract them for some things. Some of you are even trying to distract yourself for something. Then listen, brother and sister, if you're in that place, you are empty. Well, some guy in our church got born again and he told me, he said that in two years I stepped with 400 girls. And I said, why are you, why are you doing that? He said, Pastor, I, I didn't even know why I was doing that. Just one thing, emptiness. And most, let me tell you something, in our world today, one of the things you must know that is a huge need is that people are dealing with spiritual emptiness. They are looking for God in several places. They cannot find him. Man is next to them and they are so empty. That's why they go into marijuana. They want, see, they go into marijuana and drugs and cocaine. The reason, they want an ecstasy. They want an out of the body experience. They want something that is supernatural, something that is super lunar, something that is like infinite feeling. That feeling is not found in drugs. It's not found in sex. It's not found in the career. It's found in the Holy Spirit. Praise God. That's why when Jesus met the woman, he said, woman, hey, I can give you water. Woman says, you don't have a bucket. He says, the water you're fetching, when you drink, you'll thirst again. Because that's how they eat. You go to the marijuana, and after two hours or eight hours, you're thirsty again. You go and see Lucy and sleep with her, and after five hours, you're thirsty again. And you go and make some more money, and after some more money, you're thirsty again. And you go to do molly and loud and, uh, and mix and cocaine. And after everything, you're thirsty again. And you miss nicotine and mix and mix and free and become a scientist. And you're thirsty again. And after your experiment, the whole is empty. Jesus Christ says, you can fill the hole. You can't fill it. No. He said, come to me. I give you water. When you drink it, you will never test again. He says, why? Because this water shall be in you. Rivers. Of living water. I know I'm saying this to you tonight. Many girls here are, are thirsty. And you think it's the man that you need. You need God. That's the truth. Many guys here are thirsty. You think it's money you need. You need God. Some other people are here. You think it's power you need. You need God. So I'm point, you say you need a huge, huge leap in your career. What you need is God. Because that's what they call the rat race. You know what the rat race is? The moment you get it, it moves again. The moment you get it, it moves again. And Jesus Christ said, no, I, what you need is water for me. I will be in you, rivers of living water. Why, do, why are you so depressed? You know why you're so depressed? You are chasing, and the more you chase, the more you are not filled. You chase and chase and chase, and the more you chase, the more you're not filled. Let's pray. I'm not closing yet, but I need to pray. I sense in my spirit that people that are thirsty in this place, and you've looked for God in all the wrong places. You've gotten pregnant. You've tried to commit suicide. But today it's occurring to you that maybe it's God I'm looking for. 
It is God you're looking for. And you have looked for him in all the wrong places. Look for him in Christ. God is found in Christ Jesus. Anywhere you're here, if you know you're far from Jesus, you're not born again. Or maybe you don't have a relationship with him as it needs to be. I want to give you the opportunity before I continue to pray to raise up your right hands. I love to lead to Christ. I, I respect you, sir. I respect you, ma'am. But this is not about you, really. It's about the test that you carry. Anywhere you are, just put your right hand above your head. All of you that are not, all of you praying, just close your eyes and respect that decision. Thank you for doing that. Put your right hands up and thank you, my brother. God bless you. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. Another person, thank you, my sister. Brother, God bless you. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Just put your right hand above your head. You don't even have to stand up. My intention is to embarrass you. I just want to make sure that you are serious. And if you're seriously doing that, I want your right hands above your head so I can know you're seriously doing that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you over there also. Thank you also. Thank you, several people are doing that today. Another person before we pray. Before we pray. Glory to God. All of you, some right hands. You don't, you don't, I'm not going to trick you. It's not a trick question to come out or leave your seat. If I'm not tricking you. I'm so, I'm so into thirst today because many of you know that you're looking for something you can just put a name tag on. And you've tried in so many places and men have really disappointed you. And you know that I need this thing like yesterday. Another person, if you raise up your right hand, I will pray with you also. Just before I pray with another person. Another person. Thank you. Say this prayer after me. And believe the prayer with your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm thirsty. But today I've come to know that test can be quenched in you alone. There's no substitute for Christ. I believe the message of the gospel. That you, Jesus Christ, when you died, you died for me. And you were raised, oh glory to God, for the, from the dead, for my justification. And you brought me life. And today... I receive life from you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Bible that I believe with all of my heart says this, that you are saved. That's what it means. I'm going to ask you for a favor. The usher is going to give you your card. Will you fill the card with your details? Someone say, why do you want my details? For two reasons. Number one, so that I can pray with you. The second reason is this. I would love to teach you how to pray with your Bible. So we're going to put you in a group. We're going to call you and say, will you be in a group? It's an online group. And say, so will you read your Bible every day? Just for you to know what you've done. Amen. If you don't get, get a card, ask the chance for it. Glory to God. So we said that um, every man is designed for God. So there are five ways to cut the purpose of God. Number one, man is created to know and to worship God. That's man's purpose. And I just explained that that's why God has to be at the center. The second thing is this. Every man is designed for connection. Every man is designed for connection to a family. So one of the things God designed you for is that you'll be spiritually connected to other people and physically connected also. That's why I always say, tell people, I say isolation pre precedes destruction. When I say isolation precedes what? Destruction. So if the devil wants to destroy someone, he isolates them first. The third, the third, the third purpose explains dimensional purposes is I'm created to be like Christ. The Bible says we're made in his image, not the image. Who is that image? Christ is the image. Because that's what the Bible says in the Testament. It's a Christ image of God. The fourth thing is this. Man is designed to make a difference by giving back. So we're designed to make a difference. How do we make a difference? God has given you gift, talent, purpose. And let me say, let me say this to you quickly. You may, not, you may not know this, but purpose interprets design. Someone say Purpose. No, that's weak. Someone say purpose. Interprets. Design. Let me explain to you this way. So when the brothers of Joseph saw Joseph, they fell on their knees like, ooh, Joseph was sorry. They said crying. Please don't kill us. We're sorry. We don't know why we sold into Egypt and all those things. And they thought Joseph would be angry. Joseph looked at them. You know what Joseph said? Joseph said, you thought you sold me into slavery, into Egypt. I said, but God sent me ahead of you to what? To preserve you from famine and hunger. You know what happened? Because Joseph had understood why. 
he was in Egypt, all of his experiences that caused him pain did not matter again. The reason why your past keeps costing you pain is this. You don't understand your purpose yet. Once you understand your purpose, your past will stop hurting you. Because all of a sudden, your past will have a meaning. Somebody say hallelujah. That's weak. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Your past will have a meaning. This is great today. Oh my God. Purpose, man is made for a mission of making God famous. Genesis chapter 26 verse 1. So today we're talking about following God's plan for your life. So we, we said purpose is generous for everybody, but God's plan for each person is specific. All right. Genesis chapter 26 verse 1. The Bible says, and there was a famine in the, in the land beside the first famine that was in the day of Abraham and Isaac. In the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared to him and says, do not go down into Egypt, into the land I will tell thee. Um, it says, do not go down into, into Egypt. It says, dwell in the land which I will tell thee of. What is it saying here? See, there was recession in the land. And everybody began to migrate to Egypt. And he thought that was a natural thing to do because that was what his father did also. Abraham also went to Egypt in the first recession. And I'm saying so to you because in recession, everybody look up, look up here. I, I want to say this in the other services. In tough time, people make the worst mistakes. That makes things worse. I don't know why that happens. In recession, Everybody began to move to Egypt, and all of a sudden, he was moving to Egypt, and God appears and says, hey, do not go down to Egypt. For example, in Nigeria right now, everybody's moving to where? Canada. Somebody needs to move to Canada, but not everyone needs to move to Canada. But what you need to find out, what is God's plan for me? It's okay for my friend Shinene to go to Canada. It's okay for John to go to Canada. It's okay for Latasha to go to Canada, but is it okay for me to move to Canada? You know why? Some people, their best decision in life will be to go to Canada. Some people, their worst decision in life will be to go to Canada. To go to Canada. Because there's a reason why you are here. And you need to find out, is it the season for me to move or not? Someone says, it's time for me to get married. Why? Because all your friends are getting married. And because of that, you start dating someone that you should never marry. But because, because all of a sudden, it's what all your friends are doing. Listen to me. We didn't come into this world at the same time. And we don't have the same seasons of life. And because it happened for you now, does not happen for me right now. Our seasons are very different because we are different planting by the Lord. So if it happens for you, I will rejoice with you. If it happens for you, I will give you a big shout and applaud. But I'm going to wait on God for my season. Listen to me. In the race of life, it's not who starts first. It's who finishes the race. Yes. And the race of life is not a relay. It's a marathon. So it's so, because when you see, see a marathon, is going to, there's going to be a marathon next month. And you're going to see some fast people. When they start, ta da 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 ta But after two kilometers, <sighs> and you see some people, when they say run, they just, you everything. And all of a sudden, all the people that were sprinters could not finish the race. But slow and steady came, met them, overtook them, and finished the race. But careful of who you compare to on social media because some of those people are not even real. That's the truth. People just know. <laughs> Some people have good pictures but bad life. <laughs> Glory to God. All you need is app. They can edit pictures but they can't edit their lives. Because you come under this pressure because of things you see on, the, on social media that is made to believe. That's what it is. It's make belief. I'm like, oh, she's having a great time of her life. He's having a great and he's having nothing. Just make believe. Somebody say hallelujah. So the Bible says this. So, so, so everybody went down. And, and, and the next thing is that the Bible says the Lord appeared to him and says, you know, go down. I want to say something here quickly, like I said earlier on. I said, it's amazing because many Christians, in a bid to do the will of God or get what God wants them to do, 
they end up doing nothing for such a long time. And in that situation, don't make the don't make doing nothing. How will I say it to you? Yeah. Don't make trying to discern the will of God the reason for you doing nothing. If you don't know the will of God, just do what you can. If it's not the will of God, it will tell you to stop. Yes or no? Yes. Did you see? Isaac did not need either to go to um, what they call it, Egypt or not. He just went. As he was going to go, the Lord said, stop. Because God is always kind to stop from doing the wrong things. Actually, when he sees your heart, he did not know. I'm saying so because sometimes there's a brother in church that asks a sister out and says, hey, sister, I like you. I want to marry you. Are you okay? Can we do it together? Sister said, let me pray. Six months, sister is praying. My brother, that's a Christian who saying, I don't like you. All you have to do is go and make some more money and come back. She will say yes. Sometimes. Some of you are here right now. What, what do you want to do in the future? I'm just praying for the will of God. Just start something. As you're about to start sin, just as you're starting, just pay attention to God and know that I'm going to stop if it's something to stop. So, so the Bible says this, and God says you should not go. Verse 3 says, So join in the land which I will, I will be with you, and I will bless thee, for unto thee and to thy, to thy seed I will give all the countries, and I will perform the oath which I saw unto Abraham thy father, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven, verse 4, and will give unto thy seeds of all the countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandment, my statutes and my law. Let's jump to verse 10, verse 11. And Abimelech touched, charged all his people, says, um, He that touched his man or his wife, friend to Isaac, shall surely be put to death. Verse 12, in the recession, verse 12, And Isaac sold in that land. This is what God told him to do. Now, let me say so in that. It's not about giving that an offering. This is actually about agriculture, actually. Bible says, And Isaac sold in that land. What the Bible says he sold? He sold in that land and received what? And received in the same year an hundredfold return, and the Lord blessed him, and the man waxed great, went forward and grew until he became very great. What I'm saying is this, that Isaac, there was a recession, but God told Isaac to sow in that land. Let me tell you something quickly here about the plan of God. So God has a plan for everyone. God has a plan for everyone. Let's turn to Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Hmm. Let's just get I want to go. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, they are the thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you what? Message and five says this way, for I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you. What I'm saying so is that every one of you here, God has a plan for your life. That's what I'm going to. And the reason I wanted to say that is this, if God has a plan for my life, I will be very smart to begin to yield to God's plan for my life. That's a smart decision. That's a no-brainer. Think about it. Ever look up here. Look up here. You have a plan on how to make your business succeed. You want to see Dangote. Dangote looks at it and says, take this plan to make your business succeed. Which one is better? No, talk to me now. Which one do you think will be better? Which one do you think will be better? Because he has loads of experience to show for what he has done. Question, you've never started a business, and yet you think your idea is superior to Dangote? I want to ask you a question. Do you know how intelligent God is? Let's talk about that. God is so intelligent, he put the earth in a solar system. And the distance between the earth and the sun is so perfect that if the earth is nearer, the earth will burn up. If the earth is farther, it will freeze up. God is so perfect that God made different kind of animals. And not just made them, he created ways for them to feed. He created places for them to live. He created systems to keep them alive. Reproductive systems. He says, those ones will live on trees. So made trees that can house them. He says, these ones will stay on water. Not shallow water, but deep waters. He says, these ones need to be big like elephants. He says, this one needs to have wings like cockroaches and butterflies. Do you know, do you know how... 
how a cockroach feeds, they will bring up, you do the biology, they will bring up something out of their mouth and put some kind of saliva into it, make it soft and suck it back inside. Do you know, do you know they, we, that is for a cockroach that is nothing. You kill a cockroach like this. And God looks at the cockroach and puts such intelligence in devising that being. And God does not have just one. There's a mosquito. There's soldier ants. Soldier ants are so smart. Ants are so smart that during summer, they will go and gather food. At winter, they will keep food there. And the Bible says they have no guide. They have no overseer. There's even bees. And bees will build up something. These are people that have no education and appoint themselves a, dem a democracy. And say so there's a bee queen. And God put all that wisdom in their head. And these are tiny creatures. We're not even talking about lion, tiger, hyena. We're not about eagles or vultures. Eagles is so eagles is so profound from thousands of miles away in the sky. It can see and pick up a prey. God is so powerful. He made. Oh, are you here? God is so powerful. Makes stars, galaxies. Do you know when human beings will go to the space? They are not going to heaven. He just went to somewhere just outside earth. And the distance from heaven to, to space is more than from earth to space. Just to let you know how big your God is. Do you know they said some stars are bigger than the earth? And your God made all of them. Do you know, have you seen, have you done biology before and seen your body systems before? How, how you swallow food and your saliva mixed with it and masticate it and takes it down the, um, uh, what do you call it? Osophagus into the alimentary canal and it sorts into the large intestine and small intestine and the bladder and the bowel and the liver. Everything is working and you're not even aware it's working. And someone says that you just came from ape. Is the person full of some cheap champagne? Do you mean that kind of intelligence is just coincidental? Then all of a sudden, God looks at what are the most important organs in your body. It's your brain, it's your heart, it's your kidney, it's your liver. You know what God does? God puts them in your body and uses bones to protect them. Just because he knows something can happen to you. He says something happens to him. At least before they can touch the liver and the kidney, the bone, the bone will be broken first. Before he can touch your brain, the skull will have to crack first. And that God looks at you. And says, I have a plan for your life. And you sincerely think that the plan you have for your life is superior to the plan that God has for your life. I wonder what you ate this morning. I'm telling you because, because God has a plan for your marriage. You say, no, no, I have my own plan. Like, really? Sir, have you, have you designed a rat before? Not even like, did you create or just design in paper? Then, Let me create my own mouse. And God says, I have a plan for your life. God says, I have a plan for your finances. God says, I have a plan for your future. And you really think that if God has a plan, if you come up with your own plan, you will do a better job. <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> like, God makes trees, different kinds. To live for different seasons. The trees know how to shed leaves at a certain season and adjust. When you fast, when you start fasting and your body says you are not eating, your body will auto, auto, will auto correct itself and say that we are going to the starvation mode, useless energy, and keep the man alive. When it's night, your retina communicates with your brain that it should send more light so I can see and focus on the object. Do you know, if your body was a system, how many machines work in you directly? And that person that made the system says, I have a plan for your life. And because you went to some school, because your parents are somebody, because you have a degree, because you can speak British English that you copy from television, <laughs> you really think that your plan for your life is superior to God's plan for your life? Listen to me. 
you can't be correct. And I'm saying the reason why a lot of people struggle is this. They never come to a place where they're like, God, I can do it myself. When you want to choose husband, you depend on yourself. You want to relocate on yourself. Something happens in the church on yourself. Everything is on yourself, on yourself. And God is saying that I have a plan. Like I got you. Like I got you. There's a plan for your life. I wish you what a plan, plan life look like, looks like. I will show you. Because when people's life are not planned, they are not aware their life is in chaos. Yes or no? Let me tell you, some people's life are in chaos and they're not aware. I will prove it to you now. Have you traveled out of Nigeria before? Yes or no? Good. When you travel to Nigeria, maybe you go to a place like Dubai, London, Europe. As you start descending, what do you see on ground? You will see a planned city. You will see roads, houses arranged, rivers, everything arranged because it was planned. Anywhere in Europe, you see that same thing. When you're coming back to Nigeria, just look at the window. You see, just see three. Then you see one house. Then you see field. Then you see darkness. Then you see light. Then you just see something like forest. There's no forest. There's one house in the forest. The reason why is this. When things are planned and plants are followed, it turns out to be full of glory and splendor. When things are, plan are not planned, they turn out to be chaos. Why don't you know? You have to step out of it and have an area view to know that this confusion. You know why you don't know your life is full of confusion? You are still in it. If you can just step out of it, you'll be like, wow, my life is a form of the complex. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because, because you know, you know, <laughs> I've ever seen a house they built without plan before. There's some houses like that in Lagos. If you go to some remote, you just say, there's one room here. There's one flat here. You wanna, you wanna, where is the way inside? Because there's no way. Everywhere is a way. And that's how your, some of your life is. That's why you, you want to date this person. Like, even when you check all the people you dated, you're like, how did I date them? Like, there's no correlation between Jimmy and Aki. No correlation. Like, when you have a plan, things fit your life. Things fit. There are places you will be. There are places you will not be. Not because you don't want to, but there's a plan that God has for your life. There are things you are interested in. There are things you are not interested in. There are values you have. There are values you do not have. Just because there's a plan for your life. But the reason why you're not aware is this. You know, if you are in this country in Lagos, you never do how chaotic it is. You just have to step out. You just have to step out. Because maybe that Lagos is so great. Actually, you just have to step out. When you step out, you're like, oh, wow. Even when you look at Lekki from the top, you'll be surprised how it looks chaotic. And oh, oh, oh Lekki is so beautiful. Oh, it's so nice. You'll be surprised because there's, you know, there's, there's a master plan. I'm saying this to you because there's a master plan for your life. And if in this service all I can achieve is this, that God has a plan for you, and you need to be humble enough. Because some of you like, you know, some of you are like, you know, I, I'm a man, I'm a self-made man. You know, some of you are like so proud in your abilities. Listen to me, I wish you can see your life from the top. If you see your life from the top, you'll be so, you'll be so ashamed of what you, your life has become. And God has a plan for your life. And the first thing you have to do is to be able to trust him. And ask him for the plan. That's all you have to do. And during this wine press, I, I, I'm going to be a fasting. Wave your hands, let me see you. Put out your hands. Please, if you're not fasting, start with us tomorrow. Tomorrow, as a fast, when we start conference on Tuesday, one of the biggest things you can ask for is that, Lord, this plan for my life. This plan for my life. Leave it to me. I'm tired of living my life empty, disorganized. I see there's nothing. Show it to me. When someone says, should I travel or not? See, when you know the plan of your life, you will answer questions without confusion. 
Because you will know that I, sh I should be here by this time. If I'm here, why should I, will I be there? Because the plan is obvious. You will know that by this time I should be married because the plan is obvious. You should know what your kids should be like because the plan is obvious. The problem is this. You have not been able to figure what plan is for your life. And how do you figure it? The first thing is this. To be, to be humble enough to say, Lord, I can figure life by myself. You know, you know some girls are so smart. I hear girls say this. like, Pastor, me, I don't have a man's problem, but I can get any man I want. Big girl. Like, that's a demonstration of your beauty, right? I feel bad for you. You know why? All the people that are picked by themselves got into trouble. Proverbs 4, 14, 12 says there's a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is what? You know why the Bible says that? Because when they chose it, it looks right. When you pick Sean, it was right. But when it got to the end, it was wrong. It always looked right when you pick it. But you just have to enter to see. I said. You know, some guys say, Pastor, you know, all this thing for prayer for single, single me. Single me prayer. What am I praying for? Pastor, look at me, oh, correct guy. Oh. Don't be say anything. He said, correct guy, money day, anything day, confidence day. Get out with Yanam, correct. Yanam. Yeah, if I give the girl Yan, even quit on the coast, you will bow. Smart man. But the Bible says, trust in love with all your heart and lay not on your understanding. It says, in all your ways, direct him. And he shall what? In all ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. What about when you're making a business deal? When you're going for a contract? When you're choosing a partner? Before you do a venture? I know, I know you're smart, but listen to me. If you were that smart, why would Jesus send the Holy Spirit to guide you? The reason why there's a lesson to teach in math is because you're not good in math. Praise the Lord. The reason why the Holy Spirit is your guide is because you cannot guide yourself. So if he sent you a guide, be humble enough to receive the guide into your life. Let's pray. You know why I'm saying this today? Because many of you have lived your life without a guide. You've lived your life. See, let me tell you, I want to cry out. See, let me tell you, man, I want to break down before God today. I say, Lord, please don't let 2020 be like 2019. I'm tired by living my own plan. Please, Lord, give me your plan for my life. You, you, Lord, you are a smart God. See, our God is not just powerful. Live power. When it comes to intelligence, our God is good. Ah, see, you just need to see some seeds and understand where architecture came from. Son of a let us pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. If your wife or husband beside you, grab their hand and pray with them and say, Lord, reveal the plan for our family. Reveal the plan for our family. Reveal the plan for our children. If you're by yourself, pray for yourself. Reveal the plan for my life. I, I don't want to leave. I don't want to. Some of you just think, you know, it's just come up. It's not about church. It's about your life right now. And Lord Jesus, thank you for helping us not to depend on ourselves. And we're all humble now, broken, saying that reveal your plan for our lives. That's our prayer. Please help us, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.